This should be a quick video today. I'm just going to adjust the clutch pedal on this beautiful 1947 Ford 2-inch tractor. You can see here how much play we have in the pedal. If we measured the play from the end of the pedal, uh, say call it seven and a quarter, it's about five and three eighths. So that's almost two inches of play there before the clutch engages. So referring to the manual here, it can be confusing as far as what they're trying to tell us. Reading this top paragraph here, it says, clearance between the clutch release bearing and the clutch plate release fingers must be maintained at all times. So they're saying there's, there needs to be a gap between the throw out bearing and the pressure plate. And this is indicated by the amount of free travel of the clutch pedal. This should be one inch. I mean, that's about as clear as it gets. The part that gets confusing is when you start looking at this diagram. It says you need 3 16 of free pedal travel before the yoke contacts the clutch release bearing. And then it says there should be additional 1 and 9 16 travel before clutch pedal contacts the brake shaft arm here. Anyway, we've got about 2 inches of travel to our pedal right now. I'm going to shoot for 1 inch. Then I'm also going to measure what they're trying to tell us in this diagram here and see if it kind of all makes sense at that point. And regarding the jam nut that's on here, if we look at the diagram in the manual more closely, you can see that there's not a jam nut on there at all. The only thing it's doing is preventing us from easily adjusting this clutch rod length. With no jam nut, all you have to do is remove the clevis pin from the front yoke and twist the rod in or out and then put it back together. But with this jam nut on here, it's just going to complicate everything. I've already tried to remove it on the tractor and I cannot. It's rusted on there or it's otherwise stuck. So I'm going to have to take this whole clutch rod assembly off the tractor and get it on the bench just to remove that nut. So in order to get this adjusted the way we want it, we need to make the rod shorter. I'm going to try to squeeze this and together a little bit and then try to knock it out and the reason i'm doing that is because it looks like the right side of this fork twisted this way and that's what's holding the pin in and i should be able to get a hold of it now there we go that's been in there a while, huh? We'll get that cleaned up before we put it back in and we'll actually use a cotter pin this time. So I'm gonna remove the whole assembly from this rear arm and we'll get it up on the bench or in a vise and get it done that way. Well, whoever worked on this in the past did not seem to have any cotter pins available. All right, I got the rear pin out. It was kind of a bear, to be honest. It was just all rusted in there and these forks were kind of bent. So I'm just gonna clean these up real quick and then we'll get this rod adjusted. All right, I've got both ends cleaned up and I got the pins cleaned up too. Hit these on the wire wheel. And yeah, now we've got a nice snug fit, but you can still remove them if you want to. And of course the uh, threaded rod is all rusted too. So we'll try to get some uh, penetrating oil on there and just give it a couple minutes. All right, we've got it oiled up and in the vise so we should have some leverage now. All things being equal, I should be able to crack this loose pretty easily. All right, well the nut is loose, but it's right at the end of the thread so All right, I think it's starting to move. Let me go get some more oil. I don't think this rod has been adjusted in 50 years. So that means I have to remove the fork completely from the end of the threaded rod and remove that nut completely and then put the, uh, the fork back on. All right, 
right, now we need to get this nut all the way off. I'm gonna run this in as far as I can without the, uh, the threaded uh, rod interfering with the clevis pin. All right, I think I've got it here. Got about seven and a quarter to about six and a quarter. So we've got pretty much exactly one inch of travel. The next thing the diagram says is we should have 3 sixteenths of an inch between here and here when it makes positive contact with the yoke. The manual's calling for 3 sixteenths. I've got about 5 sixteenths. Now the next thing the manual says is you should have an additional one inch and nine sixteenths travel before the clutch pedal touches the brake rod back here. So on the tape measure there to the top of the clutch rod, looks like we're about five and nine sixteenths inches. So we subtract one and nine sixteenths from five and nine sixteenths, we get four. So this should go down to four when it touches the rod. So that's just a hair below the four inch line, maybe a sixteenth or so. So we've got our inch of free play right here. The manual called for three sixteenths of an inch gap right there. We've got five sixteenths, and then we've got an additional one and nine sixteenths. And our measurement was only off by one or two sixteenths of an inch. So I call that close enough for government work. So I use some of this, uh, the WD-40 gel lube for the clevis pins on both sides. And then I put new cotter pins in. So I'm gonna start it back up and drive it around just a little bit, just to make sure the clutch feels good. have to take a look at this clutch a little bit more closely in the future but for the purpose of a simple clutch pedal adjustment mission successful